Thank you for joining us today. We are here to have another conversation with some very important people at Concern Foundation. And today we're here with Dana Schwartz, who is one of the original founders with her husband, Bill Schwartz, and our current board chair, Lorraine Goldman, and her husband, Bob Goldman, who is a former board chair. So welcome everybody to this conversation. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of concern. And I think I wanna start with you, Dana. So will you sort of tell everybody how concern started and, and your involvement and Bill's involvement? I'd be happy to, because the motivation uh, had to be amazing for us to do as much as we all did. So it started when Bill and I heard an amazing guy talk about uh, it, it speak at Brandeis camp. And it was the day of uh, the 67 war that weekend. And we were all very nervous and worried. And, and I invited them after his speech to come to our house at the end to have some television watching. They came very close and he was telling us that he was moving to Israel. He had gone to Russia and been very touched by the Russian Jews who were very secretive and frightened of Russia, of USSR. And uh, he then decided to go to Israel to see Israel for the first time, I think. And uh, the Hebrew University president uh, met him and asked him, would he leave his post at Berkeley of uh, head of immunology? and come to live in Israel and open a department there. Apparently they had no money for the department. They just wanted him to do it. And he said, yes, he had brought his family to look and see if he, his wife and three kids would be willing to stay. And they said, yes. And so he said, he decided to leave Berkeley. And he was telling us that President Johnson would not let him take all that money that he was getting from the US government to do research on cancer because uh, he said anything that could be done in America should be done in America. So he knew that he was gonna to go to Israel without any funds at all, but he was uh, very passionate about it and he decided he would just go and see what happened. We were, uh, at the time, Bill had a patient who uh, was in her 20s and he found can breast cancer in her. She was from a family who all the women were dying very, very early. Her, her name was Beverly. Beverly had uh, an operation and her girlfriends sent an indecent amount of flowers. You know, they were down the hall. It was, it was awful. They all said, we should have used this money for cancer research instead. So Bill said, oh, I know a scientist who's going to Israel. He has no money. He, we, we could support him. I know he, I imagine that would be a good thing. So, uh, so the ladies, about 13 of them uh, got together and decided to uh, have him speak, see if they liked him, if they wanted to. And they did. Uh, the, there was a meeting, they brought some, some of them brought their husbands, but it was really uh, the women's endeavor. And he spoke and everybody was very touched and they were speaking about and everybody had this fantasy. Uh, we barely spoke about it. Immunology of cancer. Wouldn't it be great if someday we could have shots for that kind of thing? Uh, it was a, you know, it was a dream and, and sort of made the dream come true. But uh, so we decided, yes, we would support him and we would make parties or, or raise money from friends or whatever. And 
David used to come very often, first from Berkeley, then when he moved uh, from Israel several times. I was, uh, I was the hostess. Our house was where he always stayed. We took him around. Bill was very good at taking him to people who would want to listen and be part of it. Most people he introduced him to were very helpful and very willing. So the first time we decided to raise money, we got a movie called Something in Alexandra. We charged $25. We made hardly any money. And we decided we needed to do something bigger. We had a party at, at uh, a banker's place, a house, which was in Bel Air. It was very huge amount of space. We had a very elegant party there. Um, Brian Sinatra sang. The reason he said yes to the gentleman whose house it was, was because he was a banker and he had supplied the money for uh, Frank Sinatra's son was taken and he was supposed to give a certain amount of money to let the son go. Got up in the middle of the night, went to open the bank to get the money and it was a success The the son came back unharmed. So Frank Sinatra sort of had, uh, you know, he had to, had an obligation to say yes to the bank. We got money from every kind of place, every kind of people, whatever, wherever, however we could raise the money we did. For example, you know, Agam is a famous artist. He made us, uh, he made us a picture and he said, we could, uh, we could use it any way we wanted, and we did raise some money on it. Uh, it was very, uh, we were very flattered and grateful. And we kept going. And finally, when Bill was, was he, Bill got a lot of people involved who were his patients. He was sort of a Beloved, beloved old doctor. Maybe he wasn't so old to begin with, uh, but a lot of his patients were were very kind. Yeah. So, so wait, Dana. Let me, so let me ask you. So, um, that was sort of the fundraising part of of what concern was in the early years, but it was really the innovation of Professor David Weiss and his idea of immunology research that got the original group excited about funding something that was more innovative than what was currently available. Because in 1968, there was not a lot that was really available because that was the time when they had just started the, the war on cancer and they were going to- And uplift. immunology was not a, uh, a very respectable idea. Right, and, and immunology was basically looking at the body's natural immune system to figure out uh, how it could repair itself, as opposed to using more chemotherapy and radiation and some of the treatments that were currently available, which in most cases were not working as well as they do today. So it was pretty innovative, and it was pretty innovative for an organization like Concern Foundation to go off on their own and a group of individuals that really had no connection to the medical community, aside from Bill and his, and his practice, but to step out from the American Cancer Society and, and whatever other organizations there were to do this on their own, to figure out, you know, we can do something more unique, more special and more targeted where our dollars could go further. And I think Bill was really the catalyst, you know, um, in bringing that whole, all the knowledge that Concern got in the early years about what was important in the cancer research community. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that the organization would be where we are today if it wasn't for, you know, Bill's foresight in, in supporting you know, David Weiss and the work that was being done in, in that new emerging area. Several years ago, when we began to function, there was very little research going on in cancer immunology. We feel that we have played a very instrumental role in turning 
the tide. Every major university now has cancer immunology departments and are all jumping on the bandwagon. In the early years of concern, Bill had a lot of celebrity patients that he enlisted to come and support the organization and get involved. And, and one of those people, I believe, was uh, the producer, Pierre Cosette. And yeah. Pierre, Pierre when, when the organization continued to grow, uh, he brought the, the idea of celebrity to helping you know, a group of, of lay people to raise a significant amount of money. And that's where sort of the block party on Rodeo Drive really, really took, took over. Well, the, Bill came, when he, Bill was president, he came home one day and he said, what do you think about a block party? And I said, don't be, that's crazy. Nobody, everybody's too sophisticated for a block party. It'll never work. And uh, Bill smiled and went on with the idea of the block party uh, and went to Pierre Cosette and Pierre, uh, they were very good friends and Pierre was very uh, strongly in show business. And so they both got all these wonderful stars to put on a show each time. And to tell you the truth, the shows were great, but people, uh, after several parties, people were, after so many years, uh, or even actually from the beginning, people would leave the show before it was over because they were so exhausted from having such an amazing time eating and dancing and, and drinking and so on on Rodeo Drive. So the parties were fantastic. And where there was a big blank area on the corner of Rodeo and Wilshire that had been a big parking lot. It's now one Rodeo. But we used that parking space as a theater. So we had early in the morning at 5.30, I would, uh, uh, opened a restaurant called The Daisy and all the people who were helpers whom we got from uh, UCLA, young people to come and help and set up, uh, then they would come and have their burgers at The Daisy and I, 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 uh, I it was funny, I was uh, the proprietors, proprietress of The Daisy at five in the morning. Right. And it started, did not end till midnight at least. And raised a lot of money every year. And, and, and that, that sort of introduced the idea of celebrity and local restaurants and caterers coming together. And it was really groundbreaking in the history of nonprofit fundraising in the city of Los Angeles. It wasn't a rubber chicken hotel dinner. But then as the block party continued to evolve, there were a couple named Bob and Lorraine Goldman that were introduced to Concern Foundation. So Bob and Lorraine, you guys want to talk about how you got involved and helped the block party elevate its game and raise more money? Young blood, oh, young yeah. blood. We were the younger ones. We, we were the yes. at the time to be in Concern, but I had a friend and a uh, a tennis instructor that someone from Concern went to, they wanted to start an auction. They never had an auction on Rodeo Drive. So this friend said, I don't do that, but call Bob Goldman and maybe he can help you. So I got a call and it happened to be her last name was Goldman. So she, they came to the house and we lived in Beverly Hills and sat down and they told us we had no idea what concern was all about. And they told us what it was and what they're raising money for. And I said, I'll see what I can do to help out to see about the initial auction that they wanted. They wanted to get cars. They, they put all kinds of finders out, but they didn't get any response. So I went to a friend who was close to people with the Raiders, the football organization. And I had a meeting with them. 
And I told them what Concern was all about and what they could do. And at the time, they were, we were looking at working with American Airlines. And I said, if you could put a package together, that would be great. So they put a Super Bowl package together with airlines, hotels, and it happened to be the Super Bowl was in Atlanta. And they did a whole package for us, which at that time was worth about ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So I came back to send to the Goldman and I told her what we were you know, getting involved with. And they said, that's great. And that was really the start and that we were involved in 1983. So that was the start of getting that on Rodeo Drive as an auction. And with that, we made it like a sports mobilia thing. There was at the time O.J. Simpson, there was Marcus Allen, different people that were involved that put themselves up for auction that the people could bid on them. And that became part of our whole thing. And then we did get cars and we did get more things and it just grew and grew. And to this day, as we do, we still have the auction that raises a considerable amount of money for the organization. Right, so your involvement in Concern was obviously to help with the auction, but what was the, what was the connection between you and cancer? None. 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 The person that said, no, I'm not interested was healthy. Yeah. But, no. and, and none of our, fortunately, none of our family had it. And then the person who was a tennis uh, instructor, he, he passed, passed away, away from, and cancer, from cancer very quickly. And then three weeks later, his wife died of cancer. Wow. And it was like, whoa, you know. And we just, said, this is something way. we really want to support and try to eradicate and just, you know, get involved mm -hmm. to raise money for this. Right. And Bob, as, as you were working on the auction, Lorraine got very involved in helping secure caterers. And I think your focus was on the dessert caterers. Dessert caterers, because we needed to get dessert caterers on the street. And Bob said, you should do that because you like desserts. I said, oh yeah, I can go tasting around town. Um, but, you know, I never did. But we did get caterers, you know, and, you know, there was a committee that went out and we, we got the caterers and um, we got them to be on the street. And then we got to change that from where it was big people, caterers that did home, you know, catering at home and all. And then we got, we were friendly with someone who at the time owned the grill restaurant. And we talked to them because their restaurant was right around the corner from Rodeo Drive to do an event, the event with more restaurants involved than just caterers. And that's when the Spebacks got involved with us right. to, to change the, that outlook of the, of the block party. And right. in the mornings of the block party, we were there, you know, it was everyone else who worked on it. Um, you know, getting these caterers set up and help them get set up and, you know, lugging carts and paper goods to them and everything. And, you know, we helped the party get set up from the you know, beginning and it was mind boggling. We couldn't believe how beautiful the street looked, you know, it was something like we were awed by it. So. Yeah. Well, as, as Dana said, you know, they, they enlisted a lot of support around the community, the ROTC from UCLA. And I know I was, one of the people that was out there at 5 30 in the morning was some of my friends rick powell and nancy nancy powell and steve teller and some of the folks that are still involved putting down the fire lane the 12 foot fire lane before the rental companies could actually come out and and even put down any tables and chairs so it was it was really an, an outpouring of community and the i think the best part about about concern has always been the sense of volunteerism and being able to bring in volunteers and get restaurants and caterers to donate so that more money could be placed to the microscope. And I think that's something that Dana and Bill and the rest of the founders really instilled on in all of us that it's about, if you, the, the old adage, if you don't ask, you don't get. I don't know if you can see this. The ladies, oh, I'm one of them, but you can't recognize me. Uh, it, that that started it and but i failed to say that the husbands very quickly joined us and did a yeoman's job these guys are workers but they're our presidents each right. one of these guys 
Can't but remember. it was a president. And they just, they drove the trucks and did the moving as well. So I didn't want to leave out the guys. No, of course not. But, you know, it was really, though, Dana, it was very groundbreaking, you know, in our conversation that we had with Jackie. It was very groundbreaking that in the late 60s and early 70s that organizations or any business per se was being run by a woman, by women. And it was really the women were really the backbone of Concern Foundation. I mean, I know it started, it started because of Beverly Woolman and she br- helped to bring her friends together and they, they, they came together for a purpose, but it was the women that really took the ball and ran with it. And, and we're able to take it to the next level and, and really help bring it to where we are today. So- Including washing the street after the party. <laughs> In front of Gucci's, that's me cleaning up. We did that's, everything. That's great. But you know, but again, that's, you, you know, you were raising a nice amount of money mm-hmm. from your friends and you wanted to make sure that the majority of those dollars went to support cancer research. So, and I know that, you know, Bill's idea of bringing in celebrity to help augment the raising of dollars. And Bob, you were also very involved in bringing in some people that you knew in the Hollywood <laughs> to help us raise money as well. Yeah, well, that, that's it. And, and their involvement was the point of, they would bring their friends in, or we honored some that were producers, directors. And I had a dear, dear friend who unfortunately, again, recently died of cancer. And he was vice president of ICM and he brought talent and also money. So when we did events or the block party and we honored some of the uh, people in the industry, these people stepped up to the plate and donated a lot of money to concern. So Jack Gilardi was a, a big part of, and we honored him in the year 2000. So. You started with David Weiss, who moved to Israel and opened up the Lautenberg Center. And then there was a lot of exchanges and interaction with other cancer researchers around the world, one of which, and his laboratory that Dane, I know you became very close with, and that was George Klein. He was not only uh, the head of immunology in Stockholm at uh, the Karolinska Institute, he was on the committee for the Nobel Prize. If he hadn't been on the committee, he would have gotten one himself. But he was extremely bright, and he would also come. He wouldn't stay with us. He uh, he needed. He was very very old, but he uh, swam. He had to swim every day, so we had to put him up in a hotel so he could not miss his swim. And also, you know, it, it was in a way a feather in our cap that those people were involved with us as well. Right. So we, we helped fund uh, George and his laboratory at the Karolinska Institute and, and supported exchanges between uh, the United States and Israel and Sweden and mm-hmm. sent researchers back and forth to work in the different laboratories to, to gain more knowledge so we could continue to advance the research. And, you know, George's lab, if anyone would look at our website and look at our, where we've given our monies for the last 53 years, when you look at at the laboratory at the Karolinska Institute, it looked like the United Nations. Yes. Um, We had research, he had researchers working in there from all different countries around the world. I mean, there's Hungary, Sweden, Germany, Australia, I mean, it was it was really quite a a a a, a, um, a learning ground for young investigators to get their start in the research community, which is really one of the 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 feathers in the concern cap is to be able to fund young investigators to get their start in the research community to work under experienced researchers like David Weiss and George Klein to then go on and establish their own laboratories and things of that nature. And I know Bob, you and Lorraine several years ago had an opportunity to go to Israel yes. to the Lautenberg Center that David, that David had started and to meet some of the researchers. So can you tell us about that experience? It was wonderful um, because 
we got to see the laboratories, which were not very large then. Um, no, there were there were instruments in the hall. It just they were overflowing, and with, and with they needed space. They just never had enough space there. And we saw this, and we kept saying, "Why aren't they moving? Or do, why don't they get more space uh, to do more research?" And you know, and concern was raising money to help these researchers. And now we have a research center there. That's the concern. Foundation Center for Cancer Research at the Lautenberg Center at the University. University. But it right, it was, took a lot of effort. It took a lot of discussions between Derek and the people at the Hebrew University and our people in the United States to get this together to fund this and get this off the ground, which is much needed and right. much appreciated. And the people who work there now who do research there are mostly from places like Harvard. Uh, even the head of it right now is also from Harvard. They've got the very top people and they're extremely respected in the scientific community. Uh, yeah, the, the concern, know. well, you're right, Dana, the Concern Foundation Laboratory, which you saw the, the opening of the new laboratory, you know, it started, Bob, Remembering when you were there, I think they were in four or five different buildings around the yeah. Hebrew University campus. Right. And a few years ago, with the help of Concern, we were able to bring them all under one roof and bring them all together. And we're actually in 2022, we are helping them to expand to half of another floor right above their current laboratory because there are three or four major researchers from major institutions around the world that want to come and do their research at the Concern Foundation Laboratory. So we are going to help support the expansion so that they can bring these people in to do their work. So yeah, it's really- That's why we have to keep raising money. That's we have to keep raising about. money. And, and, and the, the beauty part about what we were able to do, thanks to the founders and the foresight that they had of working with uh, the American Friends of Hebrew University was to set up an endowment that was started in the, er in the late 70s, um, well, I'm sorry, in the early 70s, that uh, had enough interest in earning so that none of the monies that we raised for research were used to build out this laboratory to bring them all under one roof. So we're still giving as much money, if not more, um, to support the researchers, but we also had funds available out of the interest in earnings to help them build out a new facility, a state-of-the-art facility. And a lot of that, Dana, goes back to the relationship uh, that Bill had with a, a wonderful gentleman named Bob Amundsen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's Bob next to Bill and the Bellens that uh Bellin was the lawyer for the Amundsen Foundation. And so he had a lot of a say in, in where it was given. But Bob was absolutely amazing. Uh, had a, a lot, of, gave us a lot of help mm -hmm. and a lot of courage. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks to that opening that door and that relationship, the Amundsen Foundation 50 years later is still supporting Concern yeah. Foundation with an annual gift that we match and we send directly to Hebrew University to support the salaries of our researchers and the graduate students that are working in that laboratory. So it's been a, it's been a wonderful relationship. You know, but to begin with Bob and, and Bill had uh, a pact that as long as one of them lived, the Amundsen Foundation would give the money. Now they're all gone, but his son is a good guy and he respects that, uh, that decision and continues on. Yes, that, leg nice. that legacy will continue in, in, both, in both Bill and Bob's name. Yes. And uh, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's a wonderful thing that when the when community can get together and understand what the cause and what the purpose is and to still be with us you know 50 years later it's quite remarkable 
-hmm. You know, it, it's, it's really a testament to the, the, the foundation that was started in 1968 and to the different generations. We're on the fourth and sometimes the fifth generation of Concern Foundation that we continue to grow and thrive but it all goes back to our roots. It goes back to Bill and Dana Schwartz and the Gottliebs and the Powell family and you know some of the families that have been with us for all this time. And then the generation of um, you know Bob and Lorraine Goldman coming in in the middle. And then there was the next generation of the Concern Two group. And um, it's it's you know it's really something. You know, Concern Foundation is very unique. You guys were unique in 1968. We're unique in 2001, you know, and we've continued um, to respect the organization that you founded. So, um, but Derek, you know, a lot of the families are sort of cancer families. They know that their future children may be involved in cancer and they want to prevent it. So there is that motivation, that passion, that sometimes. Well, Dana, you know, you know that what's, what's interesting is something that I learned a few weeks ago and I never really thought about <clears throat> is cancer is the only disease that every single person in the world will be touched by sometime in their life. Mm -hmm. The only one, not Alzheimer's, not heart disease, not, MS, cancer will touch everybody in the world's life at some point, whether it's you, a family member, or a friend. Mm -hmm. So we all have an obligation to continue to support research, mm -hmm. to um, make sure that, that when somebody gets that diagnosis of cancer, that it is not a death sentence, that it can be uh, managed, it is curable, it's treatable, and you know that people will live normal, healthy lives with cancer, and that's really what the goal is. That the, the word curing cancer or eradicating cancer is really not very realistic, because cancer will always be there. And um, it's um, it's something that we're all going to do. We, we want to be out of business. You know, the 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 original founders said in a few years we were going to be out of business, and I think. When we spoke to Jackie, you know, she was a little disappointed that by now we weren't out of business, but the breakthroughs that have come out of the support that we have given and other organizations like Concern is, you know, people that are diagnosed with cancer are surviving their disease. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, major, that's a major accomplishment for, for this organization. So let, let me ask, um, and I'll start with Bob and Lorraine. What are, if, if you could pick one or two highlights of your involvement with Concern since the 80s, what would that be? Well, I think it's the raising of the money. I think it's also, we do an event for children with cancer that we do once a year and 500 families come to Paramount Studios and have an event and, we, and, and the blessing we see sometimes is that they're coming every year, the same kids that were there and they're still alive. So research has really gone from even like a children's hospital from an 8% survival rate to like 89, 90%. So seeing that makes us feel good. That, you know, we're making inroads and we're, our money is going where we want it to go. Right. Lorraine? And being involved with the children is so much fun. And the joy that Concern gives them at these parties is fabulous. And also, when we went to Israel, it was just mind-boggling to be in uh, someone's lab to see how they are in this small room just working on... <laughs> trying to find, you know, a cure. I mean, it's, it's amazing that this is how they can direct their, their knowledge, you know, in this one little room. So it, that was very, you know, wonderful to see. Right. Dana, what, what do you think some of the highlights are for you? Yeah, I'll tell you something. <laughs> uh, a funny highlight was when I was sitting in my kitchen uh, on the phone and calling people and asking them if, if they possibly 
would give us the use of their uh, private plane because uh, Liza Minnelli was making uh, a movie in Mexico and could we please have uh, your pilot go and get her for the weekend and fly her back. I mean, I love the fact that we were, we did such crazy things and they worked, you know. Of course, I, I think it's, it's concern has been my fourth child. Bill and I always agreed on that. We spent as much time on concern as we did on our kids. It was our passion and it was our pride and, uh, and our hope and it worked. Yeah, it works. Well, I hope, I hope that we grew up the way you expected us to grow up. <laughs> You're a good boy. <laughs> oh, thank, thank, thank you, mom. I appreciate that. <laughs> so um, let me ask you, I, I, have, I have one question that I tr try and ask in, when we do these conversations. So if you could complete the sentence, how would you complete the sentence? And I'll start with you, Dana. Concern Foundation is? Hope for the world. <clears throat> I think concern, you know, they say you, you can't change the world. Ha. I think the truth is that we all change the world in some small way. And look what's happening now with, with the crazy idea we had of shots for immunology. And, uh, you know, it, it's a little snobby snooty, I guess, to say we've changed the world. But just between us, we did a great job. And it's still going on. And I hope it continues. I just hope people feel the responsibility of making the world a better place. You yeah. said beautiful thing. Yeah. Wow. So, Bob, Lorraine, so you finished the sentence. Concern Foundation is. <sighs> you want to go? Uh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's a, a wonderful organization that um, has been so important in trying to eradicate a terrible disease. And although we're not eradicating it, we're um, some, most, most cancers people are being able to live with it and it's not as scary. Um, we still have a lot of work to do and that's why I want to do it. And I want to be involved. Yeah, and I think too the fact that back when in the days with Dana and the beginnings, they were very smart in taking on the challenge of immunology, opposed to taking it another step. And this was a very important decision that was made that said, you know, there isn't enough done in the immunological end of it. So let's really put our strength and money behind it to find out what we can do through immunology. And we've maintained that since we in inception. And I think that that's what's going to really, again, I don't know if we'll ever eradicate it totally, but we'll control it and, and find different answers through immunology. And I think that's the important thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very well said. If I could finish the sentence, Concern Foundation is, uh, my answer would be having wonderful, supportive, loving friends that are part of the organization. And that starts with Dana and Lorraine and Bob and everyone that's come before you and will come after you and everyone that we get the opportunity to work together with, and especially to our researchers and the the past, present, and future generation of the researchers. So, but just, you know, in, in my perspective, Concern Foundation is all, both, oh. all three of you. So thank, thank you. you. Thank family. you for everything that you're doing. Thank you for allowing me to continue to um, drive the organization and take us to the next level. And thank you, Dana, for 53 plus years oh, of being involved and Bob and Lorraine, 40 plus years of being involved. 
And, you know, we're going to keep doing this for a long, long time. So thank you. Thank you all for, for doing, having this conversation with us today and sharing your thoughts. I think it's really important. Thank you, Dan. Derek, Derek and thanks, Dan. Yes. Thank you, Derek.